Ladies and gentlemen, at TU Darmstadt, I'm responsible, the VP responsible for research and innovation, and I'm here today to present Magnotherms, our coolest spin-off. So why Magna, Magnotherms? Um, well, first, because it's based on breakthrough a scientific approach for cooling. Second, because it breaks the very terrible wall of current cooling technology, which is um, very energy consuming and uh, causes the greenhouse effect. And this is going to become only worse with increasing demand for cooling in China, India, and elsewhere. Third, because this huge market is waiting for magnotherm solutions, given that current solutions are forbidden in less than for less than, in, in less than 10 years will be forbidden. And fourth, because Magnotherm has a great interdisciplinary team uh, crossing the borders of six disciplines. So with this said, please welcome Timur, who will tell us more about the magic of Magnotherm solution. Breaking the wall to magnetic refrigeration. Timur Zeman, Magnotherm Solutions. Well, thank you very much for the introduction and also very... Uh, I'm very happy to be here, thanks to the Foundation for this great opportunity. Now, cooling is one of the main prerequisites for a modern society. Every one of us gets in touch with cooling solutions several times a day, whether it's in the car, buying groceries, or even in this room. That's actually why the cooling industry is a 300 billion US dollar market. The way we cool today is predominantly with compressing and expanding specific gases. The technology has been develop developed for more than 100 years and is quite reliable. But there are two major drawbacks to this technology. First of all, we heard it, it takes up a lot of energy. That's actually almost a fifth of our world's demand for electricity. Secondly, the gases that we are using are problematic in many ways. This causes that we are uh, emitting a lot of CO2 equivalents by cooling. That's around 10% of the global greenhouse gas emission, which is four times the amount of all airplanes together. Now, what if I told you that there is an alternative solution to those problems? A solution that could be up to 40% more efficient than the best solution available today, that is always at its efficient optimum, regardless of the temperature spans you need and the power size you want. And that doesn't use any gases at all. Instead, it uses a special metal and water to produce the cold. And that's, it. that's where the magnetic cooling technology comes into place. By specific metals here represented as the spheric particles inside the box, which are also called magnetocaloric materials, they heat up when magnetized, and they cool down when demagnetized. And when they're hot, we put the hot side with water on the one side, and then when they're cold, we get the cold and put it with water or the other transfer medium to the other side. This way, we can run the cooling system, which is quite similar to the gas compression cycle, but only more efficient and without using any gases. Now, you would ask, why is this technology not already in the market? There have been well-functioning well machines been shown in the past, but the material is the missing puzzle piece. And that's where, at Technical University in Darmstadt, we have conducted extensive research on those material, and we have also been awarded an advanced grant from the European Research Council on this. So our material innovation enables us to have a material now that is well-functioning, that is long-term stable, cheaper in its production than ever before, and also it's scalable in its implementation into machines. Based on this knowledge, we have built a demonstrator validating this technology and spin, uh, spin off the company Magnoterm Solutions. And right now we are building a first powerful prototype which has a cooling capacity of up to 1,000 watts, which uh, is comparable to three to four home refrigerators. Now, we are not the first ones, we are not the only ones on this technology. Why us? How can we stay competitive? Well, first of all, it's not easy to build such a machine. You need a deep understanding in magnetism and magnetical materials, but also mechanical engineering. And we are coming from material science, bringing this into the mechanical engineering domain. 
Now, of course, also patents are available for us, and we have further ones pending. The next step now is to put this technology onto the street and integrate our cooling machine into a system. Now, remember, already today, we have 3.6 billion cooling devices in use. In only 30 years' time, this number will go up almost three times to more than 9 billion. We have understood that we need fundamental changes in order to preserve our planet. We have put in place different mechanisms, partially very successful. In Europe, for example, all climate-unfriendly cooling gases will be banned until 2030, which puts the industry in, in chaos at the moment. The alternatives are either explosive, <coughs> toxic, or otherwise problematic. So in order to make the next change, we don't need incremental changes, but we need breakthrough technologies, technologies like the magnetic refrigeration. Thank you.